feel like Katana is just one of the coolest paper airplanes I have ever designed. It has this awesome cockpit, the wing angle change, the twin fins, and of course the star of the show, which is this amazing afterburner in the back. I am so proud of the origami that goes into forcing this into that three-dimensional shape that is just so, so cool. And actually the plane even holds its three-dimensional shape, which I am just stoked about. Now I have designed a template for this plane. So if you support me on patreon.com slash foldable flight, you can fold a plane that looks just like this. There are now over 50 templates that for just $4 a month you gain access to. And of course, this is the newest addition to that library. So go over there, check that out, and you can fold a plane that looks as awesome as this one. Now, even if you don't support me on Patreon, I have included a link in the description to a template that looks like this, which at least gives you the cut lines for the fins of the plane. It's not critical that you use that. You can make these cut lines be anything kind of similar to this, but it does make sure that you get it right without any real stress involved. So with that said, let's get folding. All you will need in order to fold this plane is a regular sheet of printer paper and a pair of scissors. If you use this template, just cut it out along the outer line. If you are using eight and a half by 11 inch paper, that's the American standard, remove three quarters of an inch from the edge that will make it a little narrower and make the plane work for you. If you are using A4 paper, that is what the plane is designed from, you're good to go. And with that, let's begin by folding the paper in half from right to left. Open it up, fold the top to the bottom. Open it up again and fold the top to the crease you just made. And now you can open that up and flip the paper over, pull the crease you just made down to the bottom horizontal crease and you can crease all the way across on the layer behind. And when you open it up, it should look like that. And you're flipping it over once again, pulling that middle crease to this crease here. And you just need to make a little pinch crease as a reference point, right like that on the layer behind. Now you have that mark there and we'll rotate it and pull this edge to that point there. And you're just making a little pinch crease like so. Okay, and I'm going to rotate it back into this position so all my creases are on the top, flip the paper over and pull this bottom horizontal crease up to the top one using the existing creases, just like that. And now I will fold the plane in half along that existing center crease so the layers are face up, remain on the outside, just like that. And I'll set it down so that the folded edge is closest to me. Fold this corner to that corner right there and just make another little pinch crease as a reference point right on that front edge. And now I'll rotate it into this position and I'm folding from that pinch crease I just made to that point right there. Okay, I'll stand that whole section up and squash fold it just like so. And you want to land this crease along that edge there and flatten all that out. And now I'll flip the paper over and fold along this existing crease here, but reverse it just like so. Okay, I'm going to rotate the paper now into this position and fold from this point right here to that point back there. This front point, you can see you've got this flap. The front point is where that flap will catch. And don't pull too hard at the front because you can tear that section. So kind of just loosely begin to place your crease at the front and then swing toward this back corner. And once you've got it about where you want it, you can crease all the way to the back. And notice I'm missing this corner just slightly. So there is what that crease looks like. And I can go ahead and flip the paper over and fold this side to match. So I'm landing that corner there, this corner there. Kind of roll your layers as you do this to help avoid them from kinking. 
As you fold it, you've got a lot of layers folding together all at once. Okay, and your plane should look like that. You've got this pocket here, you are good to go. So now I'm going to rotate it once again into this position so that these little edges are on the left side. And basically I'm going to go ahead and make a fold here and I'll explain to you how I determined the angle of this fold. So you can see I've folded it, a little triangle goes past the bottom. Basically the way I determined that angle is if you open it up and look on this side, you've got that little layer there. I'm continuing that angle on this side. So I'm just looking for the edge of that layer as I make this crease and creasing like so. I'll flip it over and fold this side to match. And now I will open that bottom section up and tuck these little triangles inside it, just like this. And now I'm ready to make a crease that starts at the nose of the plane. And I'm going to land this edge of this band, holding the whole band together along this edge here. So watch as I do that, make sure my crease is starting at the nose. And then I'm landing that band on this edge. And notice I'm not going to crease this pocket here. That pocket opens up as I do all this. I'm just creasing this edge right here and the edge inside my pocket. You can see that little edge in there. And now I'm ready to flatten my pocket by lining this crease up here with that back edge. Right, so that crease goes right to that edge and I can flatten. Okay, I'll flip the plane over and fold this side to match that side. Crease starts at the nose. landing that corner there. And now I flatten this wing to match my other wing, landing this crease on that edge. Okay, and now I need you to notice a certain point. So we're going to open this up at its natural breaking point. And I'll close that back up so we have that crease. And now pay attention to where this edge is going. I'm just going to burnish it the intersection of where this edge goes and that crease is, is right here. That's the reference point. And then I'll highlight this as well. This crease here will be another reference for this next fold. Basically, I'm pulling this corner to land along that crease, and I want this edge to land right along that reference point as well, like so. And then I can reverse that crease I just made. So see, there's the crease, reverse it, to tuck all those layers in behind. And once you do one side, you can just fold the other side to match. So I'll flip the paper over and fold this forward just like so. and I will tuck all those layers in behind. Okay, so your plane should look like this. And now you're just going to fold this side here, this portion that goes past the bottom edge, up inside the pocket, right along this edge here. And then you'll take this other flap and fold it, wrapping it around everything else and tucking this into that little pocket right there. Okay, so now let me highlight for you the reference point we made way earlier on this. You've got a little pinch crease that runs along this spine here, and that's going to be a reference as you fold your wings. So I'm going to start my crease at the nose of the plane. If you're using the template, the wing crease is mapped out for you. Just use that as uh, it's mapped out. But if you don't use the template, then you can use this point as your reference. You want your crease to land right at the intersection of that point. So it should look like that. And you can see when I pull the wing back, my edge is landing right there on that point. That determines your wing angle. And now you can flip it over, fold your other side to match your first side.
Okay. And now we are ready to cut our fins out. And the way you want to do that is, again, if you're using the template, just cut on the, the lines there. If you're not, start your crease or your cut about two centimeters or an inch behind that and cut not straight, but toward the back edge just slightly. And end your cut a little less than a centimeter, a little less than half an inch from your wing crease there. And then start your cut about a centimeter or half an inch from this corner on the back edge and cut to the point you just cut to, right like that. And then you can truncate your fin just like so. And then if you want your afterburner to stick out beyond the back edge, you can even cut off just a little bit. And this you'll cut all the way to that wing crease, just like that, and remove this little strip of paper entirely. And now I'm just going to cut the other side to match this side. Okay, get those out of the way. And now I will fold my wings down along their existing crease, fold my fins up so that this crease I make is parallel to this edge right there. I'll flip it over, fold my other fin to match the first one. And now we are ready to open our wings up and kind of create that afterburner on the plane. So the way you do that is you're going to hold your plane pinched closed right where this is intersecting, the fuselage intersects the top edge of the wings. And then you reach into this back section, just like that, and you're going to press down along the spine of this plane. And as you do that, as you force it open, I'll, so you can see from the top edge, basically what I'm doing is I'm forcing it open but you want to make sure it's closed to the point right there where that intersects. And from the bottom, you can see as you're forcing it open, what's happening. You're creating this kind of concave section here. And that creates this opening that becomes the afterburner. And then you can shape the afterburner by rolling these back edges into a circular shape. So you're just kind of creating a bunch of mini creases or this rolled tension in the back edge. And you can shape that for as long as you want, but you can see it starts to become more circular as you do that. I'll just do that really briefly on this side as well. Mine's not gonna be perfect for the sake of this tutorial, but I just wanna show you the idea of how you shape that afterburner into a circular shape. And you can see you also are getting this kind of opening between the two wings and you can control how tight this opening is by basically how far in you're pushing this concave section. And you can play around with that on your own plane. You can see that opens up a bit more, but if I push that back some, that will bring those together. And the plane kind of holds itself in that shape. Of course, you can pull it apart, but if you don't, there it is. So notice that this plane will dive down if you don't add any up elevator. So the first thing you're going to want to do after folding this plane is kind of curl the back edges up. I mean, just like kind of pull on them and release just like that on either side. And the nice thing about that is it doesn't disturb the back edge at all and add any wrinkles to it. But if you find that's not enough up elevator, you can create little dimples in the back edge, just like this, bending them up and that helps compensate from the plane's natural tendency to dive as well. So with all that said, thank you for watching this tutorial and good luck flying your plane.